In this video, we're going to cover both types of t-tests. The first one we're going to cover is the two independent groups. If you thought that chi-square was overly simplified, it probably was. This one we're going to kind of get into more of the, the modality of how to read and what it's used for. The, uh, the t this one specifically, uh, you're looking at one dependent variable across two independent variables. And we'll go into more detail here in a second. Okay, so here we go. Now we're talking about the, the two independent groups, right? The t-test for two independent groups and only two. So when we exceed more than two independent groups, then we are looking at something like an ANOVA and that's not part of this video. So uh, just to kind of go over the situation here, the coach here, he, uh, he has your varsity and sub varsity, which makes up your independent groups and their scores associated with each group off to the right hand side. Uh, the coach has set a 0.05 alpha level, and basically he's using SPSS to calculate any of the data. So again, no math involved with this, but as far as knowing how to read the chart on the next slide. And so if you followed all the directions from the 1 to 10 here and clicked OK, and what SPS would kick out is these tables or this data here. So let's just take a second to read the data. Again, no math involved, a whole bunch of knowing how to use a, a system to kick out some data and knowing how to interpret the data. So just going from left to right, you know, you got varsity here, check. You got sub varsity here, check. So now we got our two uh, independent groups. Each group had eight participants each, which makes it easier to do stats. Uh, the mean, pretty big number here, right? So you see the varsity had a mean of 18.38 and the JV had 14.45. So you can already see that on average, the, the varsity had a much better score uh, or serving accuracy, the uh, measurable serving accuracy. But you can also still see the standard deviation. You still see the standard deviation of error mean. So you, if you ever wanted to, I don't see why you would, but you can always throw up your uh, bell curve here and put your standard deviations of one, two, and three. But whatever, let's move on to the next table, right? So the t-test uh, scores, basically. So when you see the t here, this is not the t-score from differential statistics, so keep that in mind. Uh, what you really want to notice is the uh, the t score is one thing, yeah. Obviously, if you're taking a t test, you want to know what your t score is. But you also, I'm gonna change colors real quickly here. You want to know these two uh, scores as well. So your your sig, uh, basically it's zero. You know the two tail score, and it's a little bit different than this, right? Because we know that the uh, the coach set his uh, alpha level at 0.05 or 5%, but that, that's not relative to the information here. What we're looking at is the the, the, the two-tailed significance uh, of both of zero, which means that the results up here was significant enough to, uh, to reject the, the null hypothesis and accept the alternative. Uh, but then again, you, you see how these dat this data here is similar, so that means that it's it's just a triple check going on. So there you go. That's basically uh, the t-test for the two independent groups. You can read this this part of the chapter. It gets a little confusing in the words that they use, uh, but as far as like the nuts and bolts, this is where you really need to go with it. You know, again, you got your uh, standard error difference, whatever. Uh, your lower values, your upper values. Again, what we really want to take away from is the, the, the two tail significance and the, the mean difference. So, the other type of t test we're going to consider is uh, the t test for paired groups. So, basically, what a pairing is is your two related groups uh, contrasted against one independent variable. So, uh, when you look at the, the next example here, the, uh, the varsity serving accuracy. So in a previous example, we we're comparing two independent groups, the varsity and the JV. This time, 
where you're using just the uh, the varsity as your independent group, uh, but we're looking at their pre scores or their pre uh, pre the scores for their pre season accuracy versus their scores of their postseason accuracy. So you can see the uh, the hypotheses here. Serving accuracy did not improve, or it did improve. So the next slide we're going to talk about the data, and then the slide after that is when we're going to get into the how to interpret the results. Here again is the data for the varsity team preseason serving accuracy scores contrasted against the postseason accuracy scores. So uh, just take a second to look at what's happening here. You, we're, we're, it'll make sense on the next slide, but you can see here this first participant had a preseason score of 18 and then postseason improved two points to, uh, to a 20. So essentially it went up uh, here. This person went up four, right? Went up four. This person 17, went up three. This person went up three. This person went up. And essentially everybody else, everybody on the team, right? From their preseason to postseason scores went up. So you can already you know, think on the next slide, will there be or will there not be a significance? So keep that in mind as we go forward. And so we took all that data, punched it into SPS or the, the Excel. Excel does do t-tests. So look at uh, the results here. This is what gets kicked out. So we're just going to take a moment to orientate ourselves to what we're looking at, and then we can make our uh, conclusions based off of this data. All right, first of all, we're going to look at the pre or postseason, preseason stuff, right? I always like looking at preseason first, so let's do that. Kind of sets the stage. There, the mean score here right there was eight participants there's a standard deviation which is really cool and then the standard deviation of error which is also really cool <clears throat> but let's also look at this right from postseason to or from preseason to postseason now we have an improvement right so we got 20.88 and 17.5 and we'll talk about the difference here in a second but you can look at and see that there was you know, undoubtedly an improvement in the mean scores. Uh, again, still eight participants. Standard deviation went down, right? And then the uh, the standard deviation error, you know, also went down linearly. So pair one, postseason and preseason performance, eight people, correlations, cute, and then the, the you know, the alpha level was set to 0.5 anyway, 0 0.05 or 5%. So boom, we already have a significant <clears throat> sample reference the so let's look at the the results here right mean 3.8 3.38 so we got that from here and the result goes here standard deviation that doesn't work for this is basically a standard deviation between both of the all of the total soil or total sample uh, the uh, standard deviation, lower, upper. Again, it's a t-test, so we want to know the t-score. And the textbook says consider that as your z-score, so uh, think of that being as, I guess, the, uh, the off of the median, because everything else has to do with the mean. So, uh, but then this uh, d of f, right? We really don't need to know much about that, but the the two tails significance. So obviously this is below 0.5. There was a significant result. Uh, and we just pretty much read through this entire table of, you know, reasons of why this was a significant result. So as, uh, okay. if it seems simple and it seems easy, it's probably because it is. Uh, we'll, we're going to take Occam's razor on that one. You know, the simplest explanation is usually the right one. So um, that's basically the t-test, the difference between both t-tests, and if you watch my other videos, you'll also see the difference between these tests and the ANOVAs versus the chi-squared. Again, the biggest difference between uh, t-tests and ANOVAs is the, uh, the independent groups. So ANOVAs, we talk about three or more uh, independent groups, whereas you can do a two test on the ANOVA, but uh, it just seems to be easier to do that for a t-test. So 
I uh, hope this helped. I hope it was informative. I hope it kind of <laughs> shed some light on the idea of what a T-test, what to look for in a T-test result. And uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel and wait for the next one.